So friends, in this segment, let us start discussing about various methods of laryngeal examination in the OPD. Larynx is unique. It's lying inside the well. This neck is a well and larynx inside that well. So it's not easy to visualize that. It is easy to see your tongue in the mirror when you brush your teeth in the morning. You can examine your tongue yourself. But for laryngeal examination, you need some special techniques because it is lying within the well called neck. The first examination technique in the OPD is indirect laryngoscopy. And this is done with the help of indirect laryngoscopy mirror, which is right now on the screen. The short form is IL mirror. Indirect laryngoscopy mirror. And you can see very clearly, this is a straight mirror. There's no angulation of that. Okay. So this is the indirect laryngoscopy mirror and it's a straight mirror. It's a straight mirror. Okay. Now, let us see how we use this in the OPD. First of all, describe to the patient what you're going to do. Okay. Now, before you use this mirror, you must warm it on the spirit lamp. We have a spirit lamp in the OPD. Warm this mirror on the flame of the spirit lamp. Why you want to warm this mirror? Because if you don't warm this mirror and you put in the patient's mouth, there will be fogging, fogging of the mirror. Do you remember? When we, in the cold in weather, when we get up, we are standing on the wash basin and we do like on the mirror and there's, you know, we used to make the heart on that. That's what fogging, fogging, you know. We don't want any fogging. Otherwise, how will you see that? Because this is an indirect examination. Because you want to see the image of this. So why we warm it so that, so that there is no fogging of the mirror. After warming on the flame, you must check it on the back of your hand. Always check the back of the mirror and back of the shaft also on the back of your hand so that it's not over hot for the patient. And then you put this mirror in the patient's mouth. How? You hold the tongue of the patient and you open the mouth with the other finger and you then you put the mirror in the patient's mouth like the way image is being shown over there. And then you see the image of the larynx. Mind you, this is not larynx you are seeing better. This is you are seeing the image better. Look at screen. Da. Look at screen. This is what is happening. This is larynx better. This is larynx. But you are not seeing the larynx. You are seeing the image of this. You are seeing this one better. You are seeing the image of larynx better. Indirect laryngoscopy. You are not seeing the larynx. This is larynx better. You are not seeing it. You are seeing the image of larynx. That's why somebody called it indirect laryngoscopy better. Okay. Now, Please understand, if it's the image, it will be inverted image. So right will look left, left will look right. Better. Anterior will look posterior, posterior will look anterior. So it will be inverted image. And the important thing is that you have to, you know, warm the mirror, check the mirror, and put the mirror in, mirror in patient mouth and see the image of the larynx in the mirror. Now, very famous question is, which structures are not seen on indirect laryngoscopy? Which are those structures? Let us make a list of structures not visible in indirect laryngoscopy. Number one is anterior commissure of vocal cords. Anterior commissure. Look at my hand, brother. This is your, this is your anterior commissure of vocal cord, and I'm hundred percent sure you remember it is covered partially by the by the what epiglottis, brother. What is this hand? Epiglottis, brother. Epiglottis. Okay. Now look at my hand, brother. This hand. This is epiglottis. This surface is upper surface towards the tongue. It's called lingual surface. Now, where is the mirror? Mirror is on the roof of this room, beta. Okay. Where is the mirror? Mirror is on the roof of the room. Now, ling this lingual surface can be seen. But what about this under surface, beta? This surface. The under surface is actually the laryngeal surface, beta. This under surface is the laryngeal surface. This cannot be seen, beta. Please see number two. Laryngeal surface of epiglottis, also called as under surface, beta. So, to revise, epiglottis has got upper surface towards tongue, that is called lingual surface, which will be seen in this indirect larynx mirror examination. But the under surface, which is towards the larynx, is called laryngeal surface, which will not be seen. Don't forget, we are not seeing larynx, we are seeing the image of larynx in the mirror, and right now, mirror is on the roof of the floor, of this room. Better. Where is the mirror? On the roof. Better. Okay, this is larynx. Better. Okay, number three is the under surface of vocal cords and adjoining area of subglottis. Under surface of vocal cord and adjoining area of subglottis. Look at my hand. This is vocal cord. Where is the mirror? On the roof. Can you see this surface? Yes. But can you see this surface? No. Can you see this surface? Yes. The image is formation over there. But can you see the under surface? No. 
So under surface of vocal cord, if there is any lesion over there, you will miss that better. And then adjoining area of subglottis. Below this surface, there is some area over here. What is that area below the vocal cord? Subglottis. So some area of subglottis is also not visible better. And number four and number five, you already know. Ventricle and saccule are hidden areas. If you remember, ventricle and saccule are part of supraglottis. Ventricle is between the true cord and the false cord. Remember, between the two false cord and the true cord, this ventricle is a hidden area. And saccule is an out pouching from ventricle. You cannot see ventricle, you cannot see saccule. We already written in the notes that they are hidden areas. And finally, the apex of piriform sinus, which is a part of hypopharynx. Once again, let us revise. The structures not visible in indirect laryngoscopy are number one, anterior commissure of vocal cord. Number two, laryngeal surface of epiglottis, which is under surface. Number three, under surface of vocal cord and adjoining area of subglottis. Number four, num number four is ventricle. Number five is saccule. And number six is the apex of piriform sinus. These things are not visible. So it means that we need a better investigation than indirect laryngoscopy. Now, I told you, indirect laryngoscopy mirror is a straight mirror. This is the number one. Indirect laryngoscopy mirror is a straight mirror. But there is another mirror we use in the OPD ENT. It's called a posterior rhinoscopy mirror, which is actually an angulated mirror. This is for the nasal examination. So, just look at the screen for your visual question. There are two types of mirror in the ENT OPD. The straight mirror, this one is indirect laryngoscopy mirror and the angulated mirror is the posterior rhinoscopy mirror. Okay, this was about the indirect laryngoscopy. You have seen that many structures are missed in the indirect laryngoscopy. Okay, now we need a better investigation than that. What is that? The better investigation will be number two, fiber optic laryngoscopy. Now please see, this is done with the help of flexible endoscope. You can see this is a flexible endoscope which can take a turn in the nose, can go to your throat better. Flexible endoscope, it is passed through nose or mouth better. Generally through nose, but it can be passed through mouth also better. Can you see better? Can you see this is the this is the fiber optic laryngoscopy which is done with the help of flexible endoscope. And it, has, it is passed through the nose mostly or sometimes through the mouth also. From the nose, where it is going? Into your, into your pharynx and you are getting the top view better. This is larynx, but this area is the larynx, no? this area is the larynx area. El method larynx, larynx. So you are look, looking like this better. This is the peeping into the larynx from above better. Okay? And you see the image of the larynx. Now you see the video, how does the fiber optic laryngoscopy you know, gives you very clear visualization of the larynx in this video. Okay. So, after fiber optic laryngoscopy, let us do the third one. The third one is rigid endoscopy of larynx. You can see there is a rigid big endoscope in front of you. And what is the angle of this endoscope? The degree of visualization is the endoscope uses 90 degree or 70 degree rigid endoscope pass through mouth better, pass through mouth. So the endoscope uses 90 degree or 70 degree rigid endoscope pass through mouth. Look at screen better. Look at screen. Now what is this 90 degree better or 70 degree? What do you mean by degree? Human vision is zero degree. If I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you only. If my eyes at you, I'm looking at you only. Now please see where is the endoscope? Over here, over here, beta, in the mouth. Okay, what you are seeing is the larynx. Where is the larynx, beta? Larynx is here. Please see, larynx in the neck. What is the angle of vision? The angle of vision is 90 degree, beta. Can you understand, beta? When I put the endoscope through the mouth, I'm seeing the object lying just at 90 degree. This is called 90 degree rigid endoscope, beta. or it can be a little lesser than 70 degree. For nose, we use 0 degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, okay? Laryngeal examination, the rigid endoscope is 90 degree or 70 degree. And I know now what do you mean by degree of vision. The endoscope is in the mouth of the patient and what you are visualizing is right at 90 degree in the neck, okay? Fine. Now, let me show you a video of rigid endoscopy of larynx, how we do it through the mouth.
Now, the fourth one is the latest one, the most, I would say, sophisticated is video stroboscopy. What is video stroboscopy? It is the endoscopic examination of the vocal cord using flashing light. The difference is not of endoscope. The endoscope can be flexible endoscope. The endoscope can be rigid endoscope. The setup is same. But only difference is the light source. Brother. The light is not a continuous light like a tube light. It's a disco light. Disco light. Brother. Now, the key word is flashing light. It is the endoscopic examination of vocal cord with flashing light so that they appear in slow motion. Brother. So that they appear in slow motion. Brother. Slow motion. Please understand, beta. whenever we put flashing light on any object, moving object, it appears in slow motion. You must have seen disco lights, beta. And when you go to disco, the disco lights over there, you see posture of the people dancing in the disco. Or you would have seen this, beta. In the hostel room, people who are hostler, they would be remembering it. I have been a chronic hostler. In our hostel rooms, the tube light used to be always faulty. At night, you are free and dark. You have got nothing to do. You are staring at the fan, blades of the fan. In the movie and suddenly if you are watching at the blades of the fan and the tube light of your room in the dark start flickering flickering better flickering and you will notice what will happen in that flickering light flashing light you will see the blades of fan separately better in the slow motion have you noticed that better this is called stroboscopy principle better the only difference of the light light is not continuous light it is a flashing light better so that vocal cord movements appear in slow motion now let me show you a video to make you understand how stroboscopy image is different from the normal endoscopy image. See this video. Now, if you have any lesion of the vocal cord, now if you have any lesion of vocal cord like this seen in the image, please see. Imagine you have got this kind of lesion on the vocal cord. Better. Okay. Now you are the relative of the patient and you have one question. Rajiv, is it malignant or is it benign? Better? I will do stroboscopy of this patient. If this lesion of vocal cord will make the sound waveform irregular, then it is most likely malignant. Once again, the stroboscopy shows the sound wave formation on the vocal cord. We should be regular and periodic. If any lesion of vocal cord like this one seen in the image makes this waveform irregular, then it is most likely malignant. It means that you should be taking biopsy tomorrow only better because there is a high chance it will be malignant. So stroboscopy helps us to differentiate benign lesion from malignant lesion by just showing us the sound wave formation in a very clear manner. So these are the four techniques of examination of the vocal cord. The first one, indirect laryngoscopy. Number two was fiber optic laryngoscopy. Number three was the rigid endoscopy of larynx. And fourth one is, the latest one is video stroboscopy or stroboscopy of the larynx. Mind you, video stroboscopy or stroboscopy of larynx can come as a video-based question in your exam. They will show you video with the vocal cord dancing in the air like that. If you see ever a video based question in ENT with vocal cord dancing like this in the air, okay, mark what is the investigation name? Video stroboscopy. Okay. This is all about OPD. What about the operation theater? In the operation theater, what is the investigation we do to examine the larynx? That is called direct laryngoscopy. Direct. Can you see somebody has put the laryngoscope directly and you are directly visualizing the larynx with your own eyes. Better. Indirect laryngoscopy was mirror. Mirror. You are seeing the mirror image. Now here, you are seeing the larynx directly with a direct laryngoscope. Better. Okay. Fine. So here, there is right is right, left is left. Better. Now please, let me help you uh, with one question they ask uh, sometimes is, in which hand you should hold the laryngoscope? Better? If you are a right-handed person, then hold the laryngoscope in the left hand. This is a patient lying over there. You see the image also. The doctor is holding the laryngoscope in the left hand. This is patient with a laryngoscope in the left hand. My right hand is free to take a biopsy. I want to take a biopsy from a suspicious lesion. My right hand is free to take a biopsy. So, please understand, indirect laryngoscopy mirror is always held in the right hand of the right-handed doctor. 
and direct laryngoscope is always held in the left hand of the right handed doctor okay now direct laryngoscopy we use a special position to perform this procedure and that position is called boys position or barking dog position or sniffing position beta boys barking dog or sniffing position now look at this position beta this is the boys position or barking dog position beta now this is asked in the exam also how we make this position very simple please see please look at me beta there are three things you have a head you have a neck and you have a chest beta so chest neck head so there are two joints one joint is between the chest and the neck other joint is between the head and the neck beta so in boys's position what you do is you actually do what you flex the neck on the chest and you extend the head on the neck i repeat in boys's position you flex the neck on the chest and you extend the head on the neck when i say neck i mean atlanto occipital joint beta can you see beta neck is flexed on the chest and head is extended on the neck beta okay head is extended on the neck and when i say neck atlanto occipital joint this is called boys's position or boys position or barking dog position or sniffing position which is used for direct laryngoscopy beta okay fine this was about the various techniques of examination of larynx in the opd and the operation theater